you know, as a kind of um, principle, step one is to really be honest with with yourself about what you want, independent of whether or not it seems reasonable or possible. Separate what you want from what you think is possible. Right. Then, you know, once think- you see that, then we look at current reality, and and sometimes this is interest. This is where the root of creativity comes from. By the way, is uh, let's say I want something, and in current reality, I don't have the resources, I don't have the time, the money, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What that actually means is I don't have the time and money to do it the conventional ways. And so, therefore, if I want this thing, and here's where I am, I might find a way to to create that by inventing a process that um, includes um, having time, not having the, the time and money that one would need to do it the conventional way. And a lot of invention happens because People didn't have the time and money to do it the usual way, so they had to do it some other way. Right, and that, that that's that's really interesting. And, and you know, it's about at the half hour mark, and I would like us to take a short break so that we, all of us listening can stretch and grab a drink of water. And I'm going to play a piece of uh, an opening sketch from one of Robert's uh, pieces of music called "A Matter of Fact." And it's two minutes and about 40 seconds long, and then we're going to play that as the break. And then we come back, maybe Robert will tell us a little bit about that, and then uh, we can talk more about the um, what people can, can really do if they find themselves in this kind of midlife crisis. So let's go on to the break, and then we'll be back in about two minutes and 30 seconds. Okay, we are back, and that was a musical selection by Robert Fritz. And Robert, why don't you tell us a little bit about what that piece is? <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny that you played that one. That is actually uh, music for the opening of a film, which is why oh, really? there's a lot of spaciousness and stuff. It's actually not meant to be, <laughs> you know, listened to without the the action of the film. 
Um, a lot of times what I, I do, well, it's you know, it's got its own mood and everything, and you can imagine that uh, there's some scenes that go with that and so on. And um, a lot of times when I'm doing a film, when I'll not only do I write the script and do the film, but I also write the score. And sometimes I write the score before, before I do sketches for the score before I even do the film. And then I play the music for the actors to say, okay, this is the sort of dramatic space that we're going to be uh, creating. And it's a, it's a very handy thing to, to be yeah, able to good. do that. So anybody who just spent the two minutes listening could could have and bring in their own create creative space into the piece of music they heard. It was very meditative and wonderful. That's why. Yeah, I, and, and I you know, a little moody too, and it's slightly sad it's and poignant, and you know, <laughs> it's, it's a little mysterious. And but it's, it was really uh, you know for specific um, scenes <laughs> that were happening and as the credits rolled <laughs> in the opening of the film. So well, I hope very you. Very good. Uh, well, we have a little. We have a little taste then of what your film might might, might feel like to by listening to the, the piece. <laughs> that's right. All right. That's right. That's right. So, Robert, uh, and and thank you for for letting me. I have a longer piece than I may start to play at the end uh, when we go out, so that people have a little more opportunity to hear a bit more of the music. But let's let's talk a little bit. We you know we're talking about people who say you know. They're in a midlife crisis. They have mm. compromised their spirit. They yeah. have beliefs and concepts and all sorts of things that are just completely feeling like they're messing them up at this moment, and they're yeah. kind of in this weird kind of state. And I see this with a lot of people right now across the board who aren't even in midlife crises. What, where do, what do they do? What, okay, okay. What, first have, of all, let me say that I think, uh, generally, mm-hmm. it's a healthy thing to have a midlife crisis <laughs> because what you're doing is you're questioning all the assumptions that you've made up to that point in your life. In a lot of cases, people have midlife crisis. The crisis comes from having followed the advice that they've been given and, and living in accordance to what they've been told they should do. Mm-hmm. And it didn't fulfill the promise. And the, it's a crisis of faith as well as, you know, age and so on. You think, well, I've gotten this far, and is this all there is to life? Isn't there more? You instinctively know there's more. You know you haven't created it. So, right. um, you know, of course, for some people, the first thing they do is, you know, try to regain their childhood, and now they've got the, the money to go buy the sports car and and, and try to date the babes and all that. <laughs> no. Um, thinking somehow that will bring them happiness, but it never does. That's just um, a reaction to uh, feeling uh, the way their life has gone has not been, um, I don't know, enjoyable. Uh, But but on the other hand, uh, at the end of all of that craziness, often what the person can do is really say, well, look, here I am alive. I have whatever time I have. It's my time. How do I want to, how do I want to spend that time? How do I want to what do I want to pursue? There's no guarantee that you can create what you want, but um your chances go up when you start to pursue creating what you want. And um you know, often quite often the first thing that people get wrong in a midlife crisis and this is getting having a sports car, having affairs or whatever is thinking that something outside yourself is going to make you happy rather than there are things that really might matter to you. And frankly, you spend 10, 20, 30 years organizing your life around things that don't matter to you. Naturally, you begin to feel frustrated and um, empty. You know, like that Bob Dylan <laughs> line so great, this emptiness inside to which I could not abide. <laughs> I'm not trying to do an an imitation of Dylan. I have no right to. But you can imagine him singing that. And uh, for some people, they get to that point, and they have to question the basic premise of their life. And I don't think that's so bad. In fact, I encourage people to do that whether you're having a crisis or not. (laughs) I mean, if you can do that and start to really work on organizing your life around those things that matter most to you, you may, in fact, not end up with a midlife crisis because there's no reason to have one. 
there, the, and, and wouldn't that be nice? And I think also it, it kind of goes back to sort of, you know, where I've been lately is just really, you know, sort of really looking at every action in a deeper way so that I'm just not mindlessly sort of agreeing to things without really looking at whether, you know, is that something that I really want to do, do in yeah. my life? You know, even a simple thing, you know, I'm going to go to lunch with that person. Is that really a person I want to go to lunch with? You know, But, but isn't you know, that what, a good question, though? Uh, yes. Because then if you end up saying, yes, it is a person I want to go to lunch with, you know you're, you're there because you know you want to be there. Hmm. You know, you're not, you're, not, um, you're not trying to second-guess yourself. You've already decided that that's how you want to spend that time at that moment. Um, and it's a, re- it's a resolved issue. Right. And it, but it's, it's interesting because I, I find some people really want to say, well, I don't want to give up a possible experience. Like, you know, if I say no to something, I may miss out on an experience, which, of course, may be true. You may miss out on an experience. However, so it'll, so we spend so much time going for a possible experience rather than kind of creating the experience that might best move us or serve us. I and maybe I'm saying that wrong, but no. But it, it, here's it, the point here, though, that mm-hmm. um, it's important to create hierarchy, right. and in reality. Maybe things are totally equal. Nothing is actually that more important than something else. Mm -hmm. But we make an editorial decision, and we say, even though I could be doing this and this and that and that, um, I'm deciding that this is more important than that, and therefore, in order to support this, I'm not going to do that. So let's say uh, you got a couple, and they one of them wants to go to the movies, and the other one wants to stay home, and they both want to be together. Right? Can you imagine? You see yeah. the the mm-hmm. situation? Okay. So um, either uh, one of them, in order to stay together, does something that they otherwise wouldn't have done: go to the movies or stay home. But because of uh, wanting to stay together, they'll make that secondary to primary choice. Or if the primary choice is to go to the movies and stay home, then they won't be together um, in order to uh, follow the primary choice that they had uh, determined as more important. And you see how that's an editorial decision. Right. And, uh, by the way, the, this uh, thing of you, I, I, what might happen, I don't want to do this. I don't, don't want to go to England because I might get a trip to um, China. Um, this is kind of, I'm making it exaggerated. Uh, I'm exaggerating it to show the absurdity of the thought mm-hmm. but um you know life life can be a fishing expedition if you want it to be but i think people really uh are happier often when they are creating something that matters to them rather than hoping something shows up that might matter to them. that might matter yeah right and it's i mean you know and that's not to say that you you don't have off you don't Sort of go off on a, you know, uh, on an uh, ex- expedition of some sort just to see what might happen. That's also within your 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 choice, the choices sure. that you yeah. can make. It, it's but the it's, preventing. I, I guess I meant it's right. the pre- it's the censoring out of going after things that do matter just because something else might happen. Might, you know? might I'm not going to go to the party because the phone might ring. <laughs> I might right. get a better right. offer. I might get a better offer. So, that <laughs> <laughs> oh, believe me, that I, I hear, I hear that a lot. <laughs> I hear that a lot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's kind of interesting. So, okay, so we have you know, so we're having people that have a life a, a, a life crisis, let's say, and maybe not even midlife. You know, they're they're looking at their needs and values. They're trying to figure out, you know. You know what they really want to do and do in in life, and and um, you know, and they're at ground zero, so to speak, of, of this place. You know, they're they they sort of think you know so they're they're thinking somewhere, but maybe it's a little vague and sort of 
you know, amorphously defined at the moment? How would they go forward if they're not like 100% solid, like I'm going to, you know, write a book, I'm going to do ABC? Yeah. What, well, how we could have, they sort know, of create forward? You, you mentioned. 